गुड इवनिंग जी राधर इट इज गुड नाइट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान टूडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग द फर्स्ट नरेशन ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट बुक दिस इज द ऑफरिंग फ्रॉम प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट बुक क्लब आई हैव फ्लोटेड दिस आइडिया अ कपल ऑफ डेज अगो एंड अ नंबर ऑफ पीपल हैव शोन इंटरेस्ट इन इट and i was expecting a large crowd because about 50 people have registered but actually um, probably they are taking some time to turn up but because we have got this session only for one hour so i would like to rather start and i will provide this recording for all those who are interested and then you can join they can join from tomorrow onwards the book i am going to narrate today rather i will start narrating today is power and politics in project management this is by jeffrey pinto jeffrey k pinto a uh, little about jeffrey k pinto uh, jeffrey pinto is a very famous person in the in the field of project management and he has got a number of books on that but this was a unique book back in 98 when he published this book this was a very unique topic power and politics in project management because nobody was talking much about these things in those days but today we realize and understand that this topic is really very important as you see in pmbok 6 edition there is a special section dedicated to the power politics topic in uh, that new edition jeffrey k pinto is the samuel a and elizabeth b breen university endowed fellow in management and associate professor of management in the school of business at penn state array he received his ba in history and bs in business administration from university of maryland and his mba and phd degrees in business administration from the university of pittsburgh dr pinto has authored or edited nine books and over 90 articles in a variety of professional journals his publications include the study of project management the management of geographic information system causes of new system implementation success social science research methodology and leadership and motivation his research interests include project management the study of international interorganizational sharing of information and the processes by which organizations implement innovation and advanced technologies Dr Pinto is a member of the Project Management Institute the Engineering Management Society and the Urban and Regional Information System Association in addition he has had consulting experience with a number of fortune 500 companies and federal and state agencies on topics such as total quality management organizational change project management time management corporate entrepreneurship and successful implementation of innovation about this book some big names have given some comments like you might have known about dr david cleland uh, again a very famous name in the field of project management about this book he says Jeff Pinto has put together a first of its kind book on the subject of power and politics in project management. He has brought out into the open a sensitive yet necessary subject that can significantly impact the success or failure of any project. Anyone who has managed a project or served on a project team will recognize many of the power and politics forces that pinto describes as well so so well in this contribution 
to the growing literature on project management. So you can see clearly from Dr. Cleland's remarks that this was the first time anyone talked about power and politics and project management. Now today, when I read PMBOK, sixth edition, and I read about the business acumen mm -hmm. and the project management politics, this book is reminded. And I had a wish to go through this book yet again to learn more how we can use this the material of this book more appropriately in today's project management. This book, I'll show you the content first. You can see the content on your screens. This book contains nine chapters. First of all is the preface. Then chapter one is about project management and the problem of politics. Second chapter is about stakeholder analysis and project management. Third chapter is power and the project manager. Fourth is what is organizational politics? Fifth is how you will become a victim of politics. Chapter six talks about project management politics, some real world examples. Chapter seven is negotiation skills. Chapter eight, conflict and project management. Chapter nine is about managerial implications. What do you do? Then we have got some references and index. And uh, I can see uh, for the very first time, this book was uh, published in 1998, but it was copyrighted in 1996. It was published by PMI. That is again a great honor because P PMI does not publish books which are not really worthwhile. So I would start with the preface. Uh, there is a quotation up there which says politics is the conduct of public affairs for private advantage that is by ambrose beers in the devil's dictionary in the preface it says one of the truly fascinating aspects of our business environment is the role that power and political behavior plays in organizations most of us tend to regard political activity with a sort of repugnance, finding the conduct of politics to be personally distasteful and organizationally damaging. There is an interesting paradox at work here. Let me bring that preface in front of you. Okay. There is an interesting paradox at work here. Experience demonstrates to both practitioners and neutral observers that for better or for worse, for all are often expressed personal disdain for the exercise of politics, we readily acknowledge this process is often one of the prime moving forces within an organization. Political behavior sometimes defined as any process by which individuals and groups seek, acquire, and maintain power is pervasive in modern corporations. Examples include activities as significant as negotiating a multi-million dollar commitment for a new project to as mundane as who will attain a corner office. As predatory as the willful attempt to derail another's career to benign as decidingly the location of the annual office party. The underlying feature of each of these examples is that the processes by which we make decisions and seek power, the issues we deem power laden and steps we take to maintain our position are often an emotionally charged sequence of events with important personal and corporate ramifications. The field of project management is fraught with political processes of for several reasons. In many companies, project managers do not have 
a stable power base, neither high status nor overriding authority. They must learn to cultivate other methods of influence or secure resources from other departments necessary to attain project success. A closely related issue is that projects often exist outside of the traditional structure, relegating project managers to the role of supernumerary. Nearly our resources must be negotiated and bargained for. Finally, many project managers are not given the authority to conduct formal performance evaluations on project team subordinates, denying them an important base of hierarchical power. Without the authority to reward or punish, influence is the only tool available to change subordinate behavior. Consequently, project managers must learn important human skills such as bargaining, influence, conflict management, and negotiation. Successful project managers know the importance of maintaining strong political ties throughout their organizations as a method for achieving project success. It is rare to find senior project managers who are not conversant in and knowledgeable of the importance of politics in effectively performing their jobs. Political behavior can either be a project manager's best friend or most remorseful foe. Whatever decision one comes to regarding the use of politics in the quest for project success, it cannot be ignored. Use politics or risk being used by politics. The above dictum does not have to make the reader uncomfortable. No one would argue that project managers must become immersed in the brutal self-serving side of corporate political life. There are many examples of predatory behavior making most of us leery of being considered politically adept. Nevertheless, project management and politics are inexplicably linked. Successful project managers intuitively understand their job consists of more than simply being technically and managerially competent. My research and consulting experience has found many companies will spend thousands of hours to plan and implement multi-million or even multi-billion dollar investments, develop intricate plans and schedules, and form a cohesive team only to have the project derailed by political processes. This is a pity, particularly in that the end result is often foreseeable early in the development of the project. Usually, a result of a project manager's refusal or acknowledge to acknowledge and cultivate political ties, both internal and with the client. This book, Power in Politics and Project Management, is written to fill an important niche on the, pro on the manager's bookshelf by presenting a practical discussion on the role of political behavior in project implementation. As the chapter title indicates, it offers a pragmatic guide to project management politics and the lessons managers need to derive from its practice. The approach is a combination of theory and practice. The first chapter of the book lay a foundation using important guiding principles from research on power and political behavior to put project politics in its proper context. We need to be well grounded in some basic theory of politics, understand the goals of projects and the constraints the project managers face. Once the key decision processes that often influence interdepartmental cooperation and conflicts are understood, it's easy to see how pervasive political behavior is and how to make take steps to minimize its potentially negative effect on projects. The last chapter of the book examining, examines some specific arenas of politics, negotiation skills, conflict management, and general conclusions that can be drawn from the study of power and politics. My intention is to help project managers do a better job of running their projects by teaching valuable lessons about the scope and magnitude of political behavior. This book is the natural result of a series of conversations I have had 
with project managers and academics over the past years. Max Whiteman, Dennis Slavin, and Sam Mantel have all served as terrific sources for ideas and encouragement in both conceptualizing and undertaking this project. Fran Webster, in particular, through his dual role as PMI editor and a personal friend, has been a tremendous source of enthusiasm and support when this book was no more than a series of vague ideas in the back of my mind. His criticisms were always on target and easy to bear. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I also appreciate the support of Jim Pennypecker and the PMI staff through all phases of this book's development. Lastly, to my wife, Mary Beth, I offer with the sincerest gratitude another acknowledgement of her love and the fruit it contain, continues to bear in my life. So this was the preface. After preface, we move on to chapter number one. But before we can go on there, I would like to get back to my audience and see who all are here. Navedar, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Kasriman is here. Okay. And I can hear you. Is the voice quality and everything is okay with you? Yes, sir, here is okay. Okay, okay. And uh, Vakar, uh, have you have you listened to the sir, preface part? Yes, please. Uh, sir, Salaam Alaikum. Sir, yes, uh, voice, is, voice quality is very nice and uh, your narration style is also very attractive. So it's, it's, it's going good, sir. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Naveed, anything from your side? Okay, I think uh, uh, that is enough. Okay, then I think we should move, move ahead. All right. Okay, the first chapter, that is project management and the problem of politics. Tim, Tim Robinson has a problem. Sitting at his desk after yet another in a seemingly endless round of project planning meetings, he is beginning to wonder if his project will ever get off the ground. Tim, a bright young engineer, two years out of graduate school, is excited about his job as a software engineer with a major computer manufacturer. He has worked on several project teams since he joined the firm and less than three months ago was given the first project to manage. The project and update of a popular system integration program was considered important but not overly difficult to manage. Now, reflecting on recent events, Tim is not sure if it is even possible to complete the upgrade. Problems started almost immediately after Tim was assigned the task of running the project. He set up a series of meetings with senior managers to get their support for the project and commitment of their personnel to staff the team. Quickly, it became clear that while never being host, uh, overly hostile, the managers by and large viewed his project as intrusive and were reluctant to commit themselves or their resources to his goals. Tim's frustrations were encapsulated in a recent conversation with a senior manager in the diagnostic department. Diagnostics, charged with debugging all program code, is integ integral to the success of program upgrade. Sitting at his desk, reflecting back on his rather one-sided conversation with Ed, the diagnostic manager, Tim felt bewildered and angry by the messages he received.
Tim Tim told Ed, I have to get a firm commitment from you for two of your people before we can kick off the upgrade project. The preliminary schedule I sent you last week shows they, they will need to be available on more or less a full time basis within a month of project startup. Well, Tim, the problem is that you are doing this at a really busy time in my schedule, Ed replied. I am already running these people at 40 plus hours per week, and we are already committed to a full slate of projects into early part of the fiscal year. Ed, I appreciate your concerns, Tim said, but the folks at the top want this project to move fast. You know if we don't meet the September launch window, we lose any market advantage the upgrade could give us. Ed clearly becoming irritated, said he knew the schedule, thought it was totally unrealistic, and made clear he wouldn't give up two of his people on a full-time basis when Tim whistles for them. Trying to control his mounting frustration, Tim replied, look Ed, I know you have your hands full, but if you do not get this project moving, top management is, is what? Ed interrupted. You keep referring to top management. Who are you talking about? Who is backing this project? Well, you know, Tim tried to explain. Upper management wants this upgrade on the market as fast as, again interrupting, and now laughing at him, Ed tells him, that's what I thought. Listen, kid, my boss, who is a member of top management, wants me to run this department as efficiently as possible. That means keeping my people at work on the current duties. And I got from you is a memo announcing a new project. Which do you think is more important? A memo for a junior manager? Our daily calls from the vice president asking me how things are going in the department. So are you saying that you won't cooperate with the project? Asked him, now angry and visibly shaken. Did I say that? Ed said innocently, of course, I'll cooperate with your project, but you would get your people when I can release them, not when you have got to have them. After that exchange, Tim had similar conversations with just about every line manager needed to support his project with personnel and resources. No sitting at his desk, Tim shakes his head and wonders how his project will get done on time. More importantly, he wonders exactly what he did wrong to bring the project to this state. Tim's problems are not isolated, nor are they unusual. At some point, almost every project manager has faced the same issues. Tim is confronting recalcitrant re 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 managers, unclear line of authority, tentative resource commitment, lukewarm upper management support, and Hard lessons in negotiation are all characteristics of many project managers' daily lives. And while the ads of this world typically are somewhat more optimistic, the message is generally as abundantly clear as the above dialogue. Set in this all too familiar framework, it is a wonder that most projects ever get accomplished. The challenges these project managers face in the byproduct of the power games and political processes that inhabit our organizations, whether the company is large or small, public or private, direct evidence of constant, frequent, stifling political behavior is overwhelming. Indeed, these political activities, not technical problems, are some of the most commonly cited causes for new project failure. It is ironic that while project management theorists have sought for years to find new and better methods to improve the discipline, power and political behavior, one of the most pervasive and frequently pernicious elements impacting project implementation has rarely been addressed. Even in the cases where it has been examined, 
the discussion is often so cursory or theory driven it offers little in the way of useful advice for practicing project managers whatever our current level of understanding of power and politics in organizations we must realize its presence is ubiquitous its impact significant and begin to address it as a necessary part of project management learning to use it to our advantage increases the likelihood of success before exploring the concept of organizational power and political behavior it is important to establish the baseline our context of project management in most organizations in doing so we will see that the project management function by definition and constraint is one of the most natural arenas for political activities within firms introduction to some important terms and concepts in an increasingly interwoven and fast paced corporate environment projects are the engines of growth for most companies whether the company regularly employs project teams or creates them as ad hoc sk skunk holes skunk works to address immediate crisis or market opportunities the use of projects and cross functional teams continues to proliferate at every level of business we find teams of people working on projects headed by a project manager indeed the use of project management is now a worldwide phenomena the substantial increase in the use of project teams is a mixed blessing for some companies research and anecdotal evidence demonstrate tremendous flexibility and improved time to market that project based work allows modern corporations however many companies starting to use pro project teams for the first time are also discovering the accompanying constraints project based work offers among these are number 1 structure relating to the way project teams are established and exist vis-a-vis -vis the traditional functional hierarchy number 2 is technical consisting of determination that the organization possesses the necessary training and technology to efficiently run their projects and number 3 is behavioral suggesting that many project related problems are the result of human interactions often due to the newly created cross functional teams different operating philosophies and goals held across various departments and levels in companies then what is a project although impressive examples of projects abound actually refining a project is sometimes sometimes not easy the recently opened euro tunnel or channel the successful bid for the 1996 summer olympic games by the city of atlanta the great pyramids of giza and the panama canal are all famous examples of projects on a similar scale finishing a team project at school writing a term paper decorating a house for a christmas party or a visit from family or a weekly sh shopping trip to the grocery store are all projects that we engage in on a daily almost routine basis while vastly different diff different in form time frame and objectives to be accomplished each of the above examples whether great or modest share some common properties that define the nature and character of most projects in order to be meaningful we need to consider definitions that are general enough to include a ra range of organizational activities that comprise comprise project functions at the same time the definition should be narrow enough so that we are able to focus specifically on those organizational activities oriented the project management body of knowledge published by the project management institute offers an excellent definition of project a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product service or result using this and other definition it is possible to isolate some important characteristics underlying projects most writers on project management point to four common characteristics
just a moment i think uh, i have lost the slide okay <clears throat> i am sorry for the interruption so we were talking about a project uh, okay using this and other definitions it is possible to isolate some important characteristics underlying projects most writers on project management point to four common characteristics what are these characteristics number one they are constrained by a finite budget and time frame that is they typically have a specific budget allocated and a defined start and finish date further their budgets often represent a significant portion of the resources of the performing organization number two they comprise a set of complex and interrelated activities performed by diverse resources or organizational members that require coordination number three they are directed toward the attainment of a clearly defined objective our set of objectives which when achieved mark the end of the project and the resolution of this project team and the last lastly we have number four to some degree each project is unique these features form the core that distinguishes project-based work from other forms of organizational activity because they are significant and underscore the inherent challenge in managing projects it is important to examine each of these characteristics in more detail in developing a general understanding of projects the roots of conflict embedded in the characteristics of project themselves will emerge first we discuss the finite budget and schedule component constraints unlike ongoing operations that occur within line or functional units of some corporations projects are set up with two important bounds in their on their activities a specific time period for completion and a limited budget projects are temporary undertakings intended to solve a specific problem not to supplant the regular functional operations of the organization but rather to operate until the goal is to, to be accomplished once these objectives have been achieved the project ends certainly we should note that budget and time constraints are estimates based on the best available sometimes naively optimistic information the organization has as a result it is not uncommon to build in a margin of error for to allow for unforeseen expenses to our, our time slippages given the significant portion of an organization's budget that projects often comprise it is clear that in making budget and project selection decisions there is a strong propensity for conflict there are bound to be differences in opinion as to how scarce resources such as money and personnel are used one obvious reason is that in making such choices we are implicitly and many times explicitly making trade off decisions it is impossible for the manager to give approval for funding and funding to two competing projects the decision is made on the basis of a number of criteria that will put the two potential projects and their prospective project managers into conflict next is complex and inter interrelated activities projects typically comp comprise a degree of complexity not found in other functional departments often due to the cross functional nature of the activities for example in developing a new product a project team may be staffed by employees from a variety of functional backgrounds marketing production finance human resources and others this cross disciplinary nature of most project based work adds another order of magnitude to the usual levels of complexity found within an individual department unfortunately the complexity and interrelatedness of projects has some unwelcome side effects 
power, political processes, and conflict. Political activities and power considerations abound within projects due to the unique properties they possess, as well as the multiple goals and attitudes of different members of the project team. Not only are projects forced to compete with functional units for a share of scarce resources, but even within the project team, the almost ubiquitous nature of conflict is clearly demonstrated. The project team regularly experiences these sources of tension and must seek a balance between dual alliance to their functional boss and to the project manager. Another example of the complex and interrelated nature of projects derived from the multiple activities that are carried out often simultaneously by different members of the project team. This interrelatedness is typified by the project network diagram used in the critical path method, which demonstrates the sometimes bewildering array of interdependent activities performed by a project team. If tasks are not performed in the correct order and within the time allotted to them, the entire project can be jeopardized. Consequently, the project manager's job here is twofold. First, to establish a coherent working relationship among a number of team members from diverse functional backgrounds. Second, the, to create a planning, scheduling, control system that permits the greatest level of efficiency of project activities. Then comes clearly defined objectives. Projects are usually created with a specific purpose or a narrowly defined set of purposes in mind. Indeed, the worst sort of projects are those that are established with vaguely defined or fuzzy mandates that permit a wide range of interpretations among members of the project team and parent organization. Projects of this sort are usually doomed to spin along out of control as objectives are continually interpreted and reassessed while the budget grows and the estimated completion date slips further and further into the future. An important bit of advice to organizations setting up project teams is to narrow their focus, make the objectives clear and concise. Indeed, it is usually better to create two project teams, each with a smaller set of clearly defined objectives than to load excessively vague and expansive objective on a single project. The more well-defined the objectives, the clearer are the indications, both internally and externally, that the project team is succeeding. We often find one of the features of project that continues to continue to function well past the point of serving any reasonable purpose is that either the initial objectives have been altered midstream or the objectives were so poorly stated that the, uh, stated when the project began they provided no guidance for the team uniqueness projects are usually one shot propositions that is they are non recurring and typically established to address a particular problem or market opportunity. Their uniqueness is the characteristic that underscores the challenge of project management. The learning curve from one project to the next is at best tenacious. Once a manager becomes part of a functional department involved, for example, with the production of brand X, that manager will likely continue to face a series of duties and even problems that can be somewhat anticipated due to the past experience with similar product manufacturing using similar techniques. Past experience, either their own or others, and learning curves will allow the manager to begin to anticipate likely problem areas and points of potentially difficult difficulty in the production process. We are able to gain a measure of comfort with the company's manufacturing activities due to our familiarity with how the process has always operated. The world of project managers is very different because we are faced with a unique problem or task, the rules for how the project should be run 
have not been developed in effect we have to learn some lessons as we progress in learning these lessons and exploring virgin territory project managers encounter the sort of risk and uncertainty that typify project based work it is however important to note that a project's uniqueness may vary considerably from company to company and project to project our project team for a computer software manufacturer for example for preparing the fourth upgrade and release of a well known product will have the experiences of the original development team plus the three modification teams to draw on in scheduling and coordinating activities certainly recent demands for new features and advancing hard, hardware technology have to be considered and represent a source of uniqueness but the basic project shares common characteristics that limit the risk inherent in new product developments then we have what is project management given the nature and idiosyncrasies of projects as they have been explica explicated how are we to define project management simply put project management is the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to meet or exceed stakeholder requirements for the project the definition encompasses a number of distinct and often intimidating challenging challenges the successful management of projects is simultaneously a human and a technical challenge requiring a far sighted strategic outlook coupled with the flexibility to react to conflicts and trouble areas as they arise project managers who are ultimately successful at their profession must learn to deal with and anticipate the constraints on their project team and personal freedom of action while consistently keeping their eye on the ultimate goal but what is the ultimate objective for the project managers what are the determinants of a successful project and how do they differ from projects we consider to be failures our initial definition of projects offers some important clues as to how we should evaluate project team performance any seasoned project manager will usually tell you that a successful project is one that has come in on time under budget and performs as expected conform to the specifications commonly referred to as the triple constraint of project management in the last 5 years we have seen a reassessment of this traditional model for project success the old triple constraint is rapidly being replaced by a new model invoking a fourth hurdle for project success that is the client satisfaction client satisfaction is the idea that a project is only as, as successful as it satisfies the needs of its intended user as a result client satisfaction places a new and important constraint on project managers who hereafter have often been evaluated through internal measures of success budget schedule and performance with the inclusion of client satisfaction as a fourth constraint project managers now must now now devote additional time and attention to maintaining close ties with the satisfying demands the demands of the external clients figure 1.1 comes on the next page illustrates the inclusive nature of project success through adding the fourth success measure an implication of this new quadruple constraint is its effect on traditional project management role concern for the client while important necessitates that project managers adopt a outward focus to their efforts in effect they must not only be managers of the project activities but now also sell representatives for the company to client base the product they have to sell is their project therefore if they are to facilitate acceptance of the project and hence its success they have to learn how to engage in these marketing duties effectively on the next page you can see this diagram it shows four circles client acceptance performance schedule and budget and where they all cross is the area where you meet the success 
This is figure 1.1. Project checks as the new quadruple constraint. When project management is viewed as a technique for implementing the overall corporate strategy, it is clear that the importance of project management and project managers. Project management becomes a framework for monitoring corporate progress as it further provides a basis on which the skillful manager can control the implementation process. No wonder then that there is a growing interest in the project manager's role within the corporation. Next comes the project life cycle. The project life cycle is a common means of helping, ma helping managers conceptualize the work and budgetary requirements of a project. The concept of life cycle is familiar to most of us. Product life cycles used to explain the sale, sales life and demand for new product. Organizational life cycles used to predict the rise and demise of corporation and so forth. Likewise, most projects pass through a similar life cycle that project managers find extremely useful for predicting resources, need and budget considerations. Figure 1.2 right in front of you is a representation of the project life cycle based on the four stage model suggested by Adams and Brandt and King and Cleland. In their model, the project life cycle has been divided into four distinct stages or phases. And they are conceptualization, planning, execution, and termination. Conceptualization, this is the initial project stage during a project conceptualization, the initial objectives of the project are set as well as possible means to achieve these objectives. Project managers begin to make some personnel selections, so they seek to staff their project teams. During the conceptualization phase of a project, actual resource outlay is low as preliminary assessments are conducted. However, decisions made in this phase often have major impacts on the resources required in later phases and in the operation of the product of the project. Then we have planning. During the planning stage, the project manager is busy conducting preliminary capability studies, assessing the objectives of project in relation to resources and time constraints. As part of this process, project managers will develop initial schedules work breakdowns assign specific tasks to team members further they will make clear to the team how the concurrent and consecutive tasks are structured so team members are able to understand how their individual parts fit into the overall project development picture note in figure 1.2 in the previous page how the commitment of resources has begun to ramp up as increasing levels of money and other resources are committed to the project Execution. The third stage involves performing the bulk of the work of the project. Materials, people, and other necessary resources are procured and brought online so as they are needed. The various subroutines and other assigned tasks are being carried out in the proper sequence and performance capabilities of the product of the project are verified. During the execution stage, the project team is operating at maximum strength with full resource brought into play. It is during this stage that the majority of the budget is spent at and the physical product of the project is developed. Then is a the termination. This is the final stage of a project. While the name suggests the project is finished, is in reality, it is during a project's termination that a number of important tasks are performed. One of the most significant is the transfer of the project to its ultimate user, the client. Hopefully. As part of the project development process, the project team has kept the client closely informed of the performance characteristics of the product of the project and addressed any of their concerns to facilitate the transfer process. Also, under the termination stage, the project manager begins releasing project resources back to the parent organization and reassigns project team personnel to other duties. Uh, I think we should uh, stop here because it's almost an hour and uh, I don't think that we can 
start a new topic and finish it within five minutes. So let us spend the remaining time discussing what we have studied so far. So first of all, I will ask you if you have any comments. So please raise hands if you have anything to say. Yes, please. Ah, we have got Muntazir also. Muntazir, uh, you joined late. Huh? How was it? Did you hear something? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Ji, sir, for a late ho gaya main. So, kuch slide jo hai, maine join ki aur suni hai. Okay. It was very good. We have learned something. Uh, I will put it all uh, in the recording, and uh, you can uh, you can take it from there. Uh, okay, Vakar, anything from your side? Sir, uh, in the start, it looks good mm -hmm. because uh, it just taken the whole journey, like how the project started and give a basic definition of projects and project management. And, exactly. uh, you know, like it, it gives. Yeah. So, so, sir, basically, you know, like I, I give you my, my introduction a little. I'm, I'm working in one of the uh, telecom company, Dubai, and um, uh, I'm in business continuity and risk management. I do deal with projects and uh, I have attended one of the course also from my company to attempt for the PNP. So I'm just preparing for the PNP as well. So ah. that's why I'm very much interested and uh, I'll keep in touch with you on, on the other things as well. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, okay. but, sir, but sir, overall it's, it's good. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vakas, anything from your side? So far, so good, sir. Uh, so, a uh, lot of things are interesting. And okay, wonderful. Enjoying them. Okay, I have to make certain uh, certain comments here. First of all, uh, this is a very old book, right? It was written in 1998. A uh, lot many concepts given in this book might be almost obsolete. Although, when they were written, they were new research, right? Uh, he, he worked with David Cleland and they came up with a lot many things. So those were good things and those were latest research at that point in time. Number one, the, con the concept of triple constraint is no more valid. Although he did try in his book to introduce the fourth constraint as, uh, as the stakeholder. But we understand from, because we have lived this, area, this time, last 20 years, and we have seen that the fourth constraint which was officially introduced was the quality. But then they realized that in addition to quality, there can be other constraints also. And naturally, the stakeholder was there. Naturally, the resources were there. Risks were there. So there were so many uh, stake, uh, uh, constraints. Therefore, that theory of uh, triple constraint was completely, you know, uh, bulldozed. But still, they realized that scope, time, and cost had certain importance to the project. And we have to you know somehow keep them along so the pmi came with came up with the idea and the research naturally a lot of research was also done on that that these three things uh, though they are they are included in the constraints but they have another importance and that is they are the project objectives meaning that a project cannot be defined without some inkling of time and cost and scope and therefore, they, they, they started calling it the project objectives. So this is, uh, I'm just bringing your knowledge to the current. Secondly, the second thing which uh, we just studied is the project life cycle. Uh, project life cycle, is, it's a good idea, all right. But project life cycle is also a different kind of a, of a ball game. Because this cannot be generalized. This cannot be uh, uh, same for all kinds of projects. It all depends upon the technology of the project you are doing that your project life cycle would be according to that. So you cannot generalize and you should not generalize it. Although even in PNB, okay, sixth edition, they have also given a generalized project life cycle and they have got five, five phases, I think, in that. Four or five phases. Just almost similar to this. But I would very strongly 
recommend that you should not uh, uh, it is good for learning but basically for every project the life cycle would be defined by the technology of the project it is not a generic life cycle but anyways this is a completely different discussion but uh, uh, this chapter is giving us just uh, catch up ideas on basic project management there is nothing about politics so far we will start talking about politics on the next chapter onwards so this is kind of a revision of uh, the basic project management concepts so that's what i have to say about uh, today's narration and maybe uh, tomorrow we are also going to be following up on the same chapter and maybe we complete that tomorrow and we have seen that we can do about 20 pages 22 pages per day uh, with us with the speed i have been following probably this is okay and we have got a total of uh, 150 pages so it will take a few days and we will be able to complete it and then we can uh, think of starting another book so that's it that's that so we can call it a day if uh, you do not have any more comments if you have any more comments please raise hands okay that means we do not have any more comments so let us call it a day i am really very thankful for uh, you to be coming here and to listening all what i am saying i may not have been uh, very you know fluent or uh, i may have uh, misabbreviated some things but anyways i hope that everything i have read out to you is uh, understandable thank you very much for your time and see you tomorrow again the same time Take care, the office.